I said we would end with this really fabulously interesting question Chuck Wolfmuller asked, what are the 12 shadow languages? Well, first, we're going to look at the 12 languages of the mind. These are like the protons, neutrons, and electrons of thought. Whenever you have a mental image, you have something in your head, what is that idea made of? It's a mood or an attitude. Well, shape, numbers, phonemes, which are the sounds represented by letters and combinations of letters of the alphabet. Color. By the way, there's 43 phonemes in English. Color is a language. There is a language of color. There's a language of proximity. There's a language of music. And by the way, music is any sound that is not a phoneme, a piece of speech. Uh, a dog barking or a jet flying overhead is music. Radiance, any energy sent outward or pulled inward, is a, is a language. Motion, symbols, taste, skin, the feel of skin and muscles, and smell. Those are the 12 primary languages of the mind. Those are the 12 languages that enable our perceptual realities. If you control the signals sent from each of these 12 things, you control the perceptions of an individual. When you control their perceptions, you control their conclusions. It's a very powerful thing. So what are the shadow languages? Chuck, the shadow languages are these same 12, but instead of being applied to physical, concrete reality, they are applied to conceptual, philosophical reality what I call perceptual reality. Now, every piece of communication can be broken into one of two things very quickly. Are we referring to something that is physical, tangible, concrete, and objective, such as the shape or the color of a thing? Or are we talking about opinion, mood, a philosophy, or a concept? Example, and by the way, we use the same language for both physical reality and philosophical reality. And we'll close with this example. You see, the same 12 languages also have a shadow. If you invite me over to your house, Chuck, and you say, Roy, I want you to be here at 7. Well, it's really close to 7. I'm a few miles away, and I want to let you know I'm not going to be there quite at 7, so I'll call you. i say, hey, Chuck, I'm running late, but I'm on my way. And you say, well, how close are you? And I give you an answer in the language of proximity. Proximity. How near or how far away am I? Now, let's say that after I get to dinner, you use the same phrase, how close are you? But the context is different. You see, I said, well, I'm, gonna, I'm going to see my brother-in-law this weekend. And I haven't seen him in for a couple of years. And you say, how close are you? Well, now you're asking, what's the emotional connectedness between me and my brother-in-law? You're not talking about physical proximity. You're talking about a shadow proximity. Every physical, measurable thing has a shadow. And half the time, we're talking about the objective interpretation of a thing. Half the time, we're talking about, well, I'll say half and half. It's maybe not quite that strict. But just as often, it seems, we're talking about a perceptual reality, a philosophical or opinion-based reality. So, <clears throat> it's a fascinating question. As you know, we teach a, a two-day class called Portals and the Twelve Languages of the Mind. And it's a very, very deep, profound class. Uh, a significant percentage of the people who take that class are actually programmers for software companies that are trying to create artificial intelligence. Because we can break the 12 languages of the mind down to a binary code of ones and zeros, then yeah, now you can make computers very much more like human beings.